Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Dumas. And this is the Garbutt Dumas Real Estate Podcast. Jamie, you recently sold your home. I sold my house, Denny. How much time and effort did you put into getting it ready to a sell? A lot. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. It made a difference, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think in this episode, let's. I want to share what I did. It, it made a difference. It was a lot of work, and we have this conversation all the time with sellers. And I think you know, there's there's the conversation really varies depending on the situation, what the product is, and when we're having the chat. You know, if we talk to a seller that impulsively thought about selling their home in February and we and they needed to do, you know, paint and, yeah. and some renos, we would have taken them out of the sweet spot of the market by yeah. giving them that advice. So there's a time where you just sell your place in as-is condition. There's a time where you do the, you just whip up, get the clutter out and, and, and get it up as quick as possible. But I want to share my experience when you have a little more time to prepare. Because I I started preparing for the sale of my home well before I even knew I was going to sell it. Yeah. And and I think if anyone's listening to this and they think they might make a move next year or in the fall, start. There's certain items that you that you should just start chipping away at early because they are time consuming. Yeah. The timing I think is so so important. And usually in listing appointments, as we're talking about timing, if there is some time, we're giving people like a few different lists. And let's say the first one is the list of must do's, like the decluttering is a must, uh, you know, little paint touch ups, things like that. The next list is like, if you have more time, uh, here would be the nice to do's, you know, cleaning up the yard, doing some landscaping, whatever, whatever. And then there's like the list of to get the most out of your sale, these are the extras, right? And I think with more time, with you preparing months in advance for your sale, you had the time and energy to go to the last list, right? And a lot of people that maybe don't have that luxury if they have bought something or they're, you know, a month away from selling, let's say. But I think that in listing appointments, just kind of noting that we usually give a couple different lists and getting to that bottom is where you really can maximize sale. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'd love to kind of highlight the quick list strategy and yeah. what we often suggest to sellers. But um, and I'll start to share with what I did, and hopefully some will get some takeaways from that. Because uh, what I sold my place in April, uh, it presented better than it ever has, um, and it was a bit daunting. Uh, I, I bought a home first, then had to sell quick. And the moment that that firm purchase contract on the purchase happened. There's a set. Uh, there's a moment of panic. You know, it's, there's so much to do, and and this is common with clients. It's it's, uh, you know, for me, I'm a bit of a, I'd say, a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to presenting properties. I like to go, you know, there's the equation: should I do this? Should I do that? I'm the type that will do everything that I can. Um, I, you know, I don't put that on others, but um, essentially, I. I wanted to be flexible. And I think the biggest thing is there's, you know, I have three kids, not a lot of time, uh, and our house was showing a lot of wear and tear if I looked at it in January. We moved in, did a significant reno, call it four years ago, painted all the walls white. And when you have three kids and white wall, um, they don't last white. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say in our kitchen area, I had to do three coats in some spots to get the white back to its original white. And when you're doing three coats of white on white, that just shows you how much wear and tear <laughs> it had. But um, paint is one of those items that takes a lot of time. So if you're planning ahead, paint can make an old place feel new. Paint is paint is time consuming. And I, I found that I, uh, well, one, like, if you wait to paint last minute, you're going to put stress on yourself and it may not make the priority list. But if you're thinking of selling in months from now or next year, start painting your home. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. Go Start at the high traffic areas. Start in the high, the kitchens, the living room, the entry of the home. Um, but focus, my, my suggestion would be to focus on the interior stuff well in advance and get as much painting out of the way well in advance as you can. I like doing it in the winter on the rainy days when there's not much else to do. Um, hard to get inside and paint on these long summer sunny days. Uh, but paint is one of those ones that you do well in advance. And then outside of that, fix what's broken. You know, uh, I had our bathroom door wouldn't lock for four years until we list our home. <laughs> and finally, we fix what's broken. So there's, there's a long laundry list of 
stuff in your home and most homes, whether it's cabinets that don't open and close properly, yeah, you name it, their light fixture that's hanging off the wall, you know, chip away at that list. The, the repair items and the paint is stuff that you can do well in advance. Now, that is when it comes to at, you're, you're making the move. You're, you're a month away. You know you're listing. You either bought something or you know you're going to be listing in the next month. And you have that last three, four weeks of scramble to do. That's when it becomes real. You know, if you start decluttering a year before you sell, you're going to reclutter in that time. <laughs> so, you know, you don't need to declutter until you actually know you're going to do it. Uh, but one thing that I found is not all storage places have availability. So, you know, for us, we, you know, we could, we, when we're talking to sellers, we're often suggesting if you have, you know, stack it in your closets, find that room that is least desirable in your home and fill it with stuff or put it in the garage. Um, that's not ideal, but it's better than what is now. Uh, the best thing to do is put it in a storage room. And for us, that storage room made our house clean. It, it is a full cube of stuff. Uh, and it's not that expensive, $200 a month for the feeling of a clean home. Um, all my kids' toys are in there. So, <laughs> you know, there's, uh, but the, the storage room was a must and not all storage rooms are available. So highly recommend taking advantage of a storeroom. And if you don't take advantage of storage, pick a room, pick closets, find some space and stack it up in a nice organized cube of stuff. After storage, uh, you know, I have a single family detached home. After the winter time, a lot of mold and mildew show up. Pressure washing is important. Pressure wash all the walkways, rinse the exterior of the home, wash the exterior of the windows. That's a must. In the weeks leading up to selling, I had landscapers show up. They de-weeded the garden beds. They edged the grass. They cut the grass. It's important to have your grass cut right before the photo shoot. And then in the, literally in the weeks leading up to the photos, it's it's landscaping, it's decluttering, it's cleaning. And then between the time when photos and buyers show up, you have a week grace there usually, sometimes two weeks if depending on how proactive you are. But it's different getting your home ready for photos. Photos can hide a lot. Photos can hide a lot of dust and dirt, but they can't hide clutter. Um, so arguably focus on declutter leading up to photo shoot and obvious items. But between photo shoot and when buyers show up in your home, clean, clean, clean clean and fix anything. And when buyers show up in your home into inspection time, that's when you want to fix the locks, make sure everything's working properly. So there, there are literally multiple stages. The early stages are the long time consuming stuff like painting. The last two to four weeks is declutter and fix what's broken. And from photo shoot to inspection, you got to just go deeper with it. And, and I found for myself, this took over my life. It took over my life for those two weeks. Every spare minute I had was towards fixing the house up. And the outcome was incredible. So it, it was exhausting getting to that point, but the our home looked clean. When buyers showed up, they felt like my home was 1945 built. And if they showed up in January, it would have looked fairly <laughs> run down. Uh, but by showing up in April after all that effort, they showed up into a home that looked like it was well cared for, clean. It felt like a new home in an old shell. And ultimately, buyers saw a turnkey home that they can move into. They saw all the good without the bad. I don't think any of the buyers re recognized the maintenance of the home. Um, and uh, fortunately, being on a good street with a good reno and spending all that energy into making it look as good as possible led to, I think it was six offers and a ridiculous sale price that I didn't anticipate. Um, we listed it at 2.299 million and it ended up selling for 2.75 million. And this is a 1945s home, which uh, I was blown away by. That being said, there was three buyers that were up there in that price range or close to it that wanted it. And it, it wasn't just one out there buyer that was, was gunning for the home. So there was a few that were willing to pay a ridiculous price for this home. And I can't help but think that if it didn't show that well, the sales price would have been a hundred to $200,000 less or, or more. You saw it. What do you think? I remember talking to you a couple of weeks before you actually listed and guessing what the sale price would be. And then we saw how busy it was. How many showings did you have that week? Oh, geez. Uh, I think it was, I think 40 groups yeah. through or 35 to 40. So when you see that, usually you get a little more optimistic with sale price. But even after knowing there was 40 groups that came through, we still didn't predict that outcome. And I think it just, 
it reiterates our point of those extras that are time consuming that take some sweat energy they are very important and they absolutely can affect the sale price yeah 100% uh, i i don't i think the, the the surprise that happened was that the sale made the local newspaper <laughs> <laughs> before it closed um even as we're doing this podcast it hasn't closed but hopefully carl by the time we launch this podcast i have a done deal that's closed uh and you know i I bought a home that's much larger that didn't show as well when they sold it. And when you look at the on paper math from going from a 29, 29 square foot home, 2,929 square foot home built in 1945 to a 48, 63 square foot home built in 1984, the price gap was pretty close. And it was purely because of presentation. Uh, anyway, uh, the takeaway here is if you're thinking of making a move or selling your place next year, start early and 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 focus on paint like yeah. the long time consuming items or anything i use paint as an example but uh, it could be exterior paint it could be interior paint it could be it could be a reno that was halfway finished for two years finish up those loose ends early don't wait until you want a list yeah. you'll thank yourself later the stuff that's broken right like we had a seller recently in sapperton that sold their home and and their back stairs off their deck were kind of rotting out so like replacing those items in advance if you know you're going to be selling in a few months from now those are things that get you more money in the sale price it makes your asset more valuable it makes your asset more liquid it just opens up your options and if you're listening to this and you didn't do anything and you want to sell immediately well you're probably listening to this in summer and um it's rare that a realtor i think would say let's not let's hold off on listing in july and wait until October, uh, it could happen. This could be one of those years where you hold off till September to list, but it could be one of those years where September is much worse as well. But ultimately, there is a timing aspect. Whenever you're talking to a realtor in the hottest time of the market, and say traditionally, I like May, for example, if you're talking to me on May 1st and you want to sell your home, my list of to dos is going to be declutter and clean and minimal paint touch ups. Yeah. Uh, but if we're talking in January and you have six months before you want to sell, I'm going to suggest a long list and it's gonna hopefully pay off. I like it. And that's my experience, Danny. Hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs>